name is Marion Landry, and I'm the Technical Marketing Specialist for 3ds Max Design. For the AutoCAD user who's used to manage his content using layers, you'll be happy to know that layers also exist in 3ds Max Design. You'll be able to access it using the Layer Manager window. Let's review that together. Using layers makes it easier to manage the information in your scenes. Layers are used primarily to control the visibility of objects in your scene. However, they also control the color object's wireframe, the frozen and hidden state of object, and renderability states. The DWG layer structure will be respected when importing or file linking your DWG file. Let's review the layer manager window. First, in 3ds Max design so you understand how to work with it, and then we'll look at a project that was built using a file link DWG file and the layer structure. You will find the Manage Layer icon located in the main toolbar. Click on it to open the Manage Layer dialog. You always have a default layer in which 3ds Max Design is automatically set to work on. You can add layer by clicking the Create New button on the main toolbar. Let's add few layers here. Right-clicking on Selected Layer will give you options such as renaming, deleting, selecting the content of the layer, and layer properties. The check mark next to the layer name indicates which layer is active at the moment. So if you create extra content, it will be automatically created on the active layer. To add content to a layer, select the object you want to add, select a layer and click on the plus sign located in the layer toolbar. You will notice that by default, the objects automatically adopt the layer properties. But you have options to change that and have your objects driven by the object's properties if you want. This will allow to apply different properties to one of the objects in your layer without altering the properties of other objects in your layer. But let's not confuse yourself and stay with the default setting to control the properties on the layer level. In the layer properties, you have access to layer colors, hide or freeze layer, Display Properties, where you can display your objects as bounding box for heavier scene and such. You have some rendering controls, where you can set your layer to not cast shadow or only be visible in reflection, for example, and motion blur options. Now having that said, in most case scenario, you won't need to change the default layer property other than the option exposed in the layer management window itself. So let's look at the expose options. Most common ones are hide and freeze options that you are familiar with. Notice that you can either apply these options to the layer affecting all content of the layer or on the object itself affecting only the object in the layer. You also have a render on or off option. The render option will be easier to understand if I render this scene. For now, all my layers are renderable. If I turn the render option off of this layer, the objects will still be visible in the viewport, but won't render. Obviously, the same principle apply on an object basis where I can pick and choose which object in my layer is renderable or not. This render option will come very handy when dealing with lights, for example. You can use the render column to quickly toggle lights on or off in your scene. Finally, layer colors and radiosity options, which we won't worry too much about it since we are rendering using Mental Ray. Going back to the layer toolbar, where we first created our layer, you will find tools to delete a layer and its content, add content to a layer, and select the content of a selected layer. Or if you're having difficulties identifying the layer of a specific object in your scene, you can start the reverse process of selecting an object in your scene, press the highlighting selected object layer button and this will point you to its layer. You also have a button to hide all layers and freeze all layers. Now that you are familiar with the layer manager window, let's open a visualization project that was created using a file linked DWG file. This project show a good example of 3ds Max design layer structure, which is composed of layer created in AutoCAD DWG file and add-on layer directly created in 3ds Max design. The layers such as concrete, glass, and metal were created in AutoCAD and you can tell by looking at the name of the objects they contain. These objects were automatically named according to the file link default preset to derive object from layer, 
block as node hierarchy and split by materials, where the other layers have been directly created in 3ds Max design containing native Max objects. Using layers for my visualization project will help manage my content and give me flexibility. For example, I have created a series of mullions option for this curtain wall that I'm using for a study. Each mullion style live on a different layer, allowing me to display one at a time, helping with decision making and rendering iteration easier. I also have a layer with all my extra cameras that I have created in 3ds Max design and I can easily hide to lighten my viewports. Then I have all my layers that include extra visualization details such as surrounding buildings and detailing, people, mental ray proxy, and extra spline that I use to create my railing object in Max but that I don't need to see in my viewport. So the logic behind the layer is the same as AutoCAD, but since you're creating a visual story in 3ds Max design, you will end up using the layer for different purposes mainly to organize your views and quickly toggle groups of objects on or off. This will help the process of fine-tuning your render, for example, or help you focus on certain part of the building without having all the extra details in the viewports. Everybody have their own ways to manage their layers. So, built up from your AutoCAD knowledge and your transition to 3ds Max design will be easier.